We are. Um, didn't cheat in the end, though I was very tempted with my um, Omeo train credits. So I still have the flat tyre, which is there. And yesterday I um, um, achieved my maximum to date, which was 97 kilometres on the flat tyre. Uh, I think the flat tyre actually thinking about it I don't think it's a product of like a you know hitting something on the road I don't think it is a kind of typical flat i.e. there's a puncture in the inner tube I think there's something actually wrong with the rim or the valve it's more of a technical thing because when this bike was taken um, originally I from the UK the back tyre was deflating strangely uh, more rapid rate and I just put that down to the fact that there was a lot of weight on the back especially when I started because I've rearranged things now but it was a lot heavier on my backside um, but I'm starting to think it's yeah not a, not a inner tube scenario and because of that I really don't want to kind of mess around with it because I don't know what I'm doing and then in addition to that as I said before there's like uh, some screws some screws for on the pannier are interfering um, with the chain but those screws are going to be really difficult to get off because I just when I put them on didn't really think about having to potentially take tyre off which is a bit silly but um, consequently I really I put them around the wrong way oh, I shouldn't scratch my eye with dirty fingers um, I put them around the wrong way uh, the screws that is and now it's really difficult to 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 remove that and then just the idea of having to remove pretty much everything off the bag to replace a flat uh, is not and then it probably isn't what I think it is when I take it off isn't really ideal so I'm just essentially pumping the tyre up every it lasts 40 minutes max which sounds like a nightmare it's not as bad as you think you know because 40 minutes I usually stop after 40 minutes for a few minutes break like some water and pumping the tire takes one minute literally like the, the pump is in that in that frame bag there literally just whip it out and 60 seconds it's done so it's not that bad when you think of how long it would take to you know remove everything take off the tire and then probably not have the anticipated issue um, to resolve so yeah uh, other updates loads of campsites in France they have these municipal campsites which is just great like uh, if you actually have to pay which you should have to pay but I mean I haven't been paying for most of them because I've been showing up when they're closed they're never open i.e. like the reception's never open people like live there kind of semi-permanently and then there's some tourists there but the receptions are just never open and in, on, on one reception like the, the opening hours was so nonsensical it's like Monday 8.30 till 9.30 so one hour like most people are going to be leaving by 8 30 and no one is arriving at that time so very very odd and then like it was tuesday closed even though it's still open but i mean the reception's closed they're like wednesday like four to seven it's like that in most of these municipal campsites just because it's kind of run i guess on volunteer um service and uh they're in usually quite remote villages you know kind of on tourist trails but again it's not really season yet so i guess they don't care so i literally paid for one campsite in Pombi, one municipal council that is in Tombiel or wherever it is where the nuclear power plants are I'm butchering that term and um, yeah the coolest I think I said in the last vlog like the coolest guy that worked at that reception absolutely hilarious and then uh, yeah I went to Mauling afterwards because just was fucking around that day and yeah I just can be asked. so Mauling and then um, where did I sleep last night? Oh yeah, so morning I didn't pay either. And then I, I went to one called The Refuge, which is like a hippie camp, um, with the kind of people that live there. They were just blaring music the whole night, like good music, like classics, like Elvis and stuff, and like just getting children like drunk. That's the kind of place. Uh, I mean, I'm assuming we're over the correct age. When I say children, probably like teenagers, but. And who knows, it could have been a good thing, like, get them drunk for the first time. It seemed like a birthday party, but, like, fucking hell, they were, like, getting wasted. And there was this old guy with just the most, like, comedic laugh ever. Like, like hur, hur, hur. It would be like that, just every, every 20 seconds. Um, 
So I paid three euros for that. Brilliant, again, spotlessly clean toilets and showers with hot water, of course, and all that stuff, three euros. When I looked at the prices, I think she made a mistake because yesterday I didn't realize it was really irritating. It was uh, another national holiday. It was a national holiday in France this time because I've been dotting over the border. I've actually had a few national holidays now between both Belgium and, and France. Um, and yeah, I literally stopped at like five or six Aldi's and Lidl's and every single one was closed. So luckily, um, the very first one I stopped at rather early in the morning was open. So I bought just a few things anticipating I'd be at a supermarket in the afternoon. And all I had left for like 10 hours was peanuts. Um, so yeah, thankfully I got something, but yeah, it was a bit, a bit annoying in that respect. And I think this person was like taking over because it was a national holiday and they weren't like the like typical receptionist. because so they charged me three euros, but it's like three euros for the pitch. And then like you have to pay for the person in the shower. It should have been like seven or eight euros, which seems about right. Um, but yeah, another, another win there. And uh, yeah, solar panel. Solar panel is working. Uh, very slowly so the whole day and it's been sunny and we're on eight percent so really these kinds of things are designed for like people that live in like a year in fucking Kazakhstan you know, these cheap affordable solar panels where you just bang it in the sun and it can charge a phone in like a day because um, obviously they don't really use the they don't have a network out there so it doesn't really it's not very good for for where I am uh, I burn all my power banks in under two days every time under 48 hours all the power banks are burned i'm on my last phone now which is there which is a galaxy um which i didn't pay for uh, which is good <laughs> got that through whatnot.com and that's my how many phones have i got so i'm on the most g53 which is eSIM compatible that's why it's my main phone because i've got um just unlimited data um anywhere in the world which is pretty sick and um then I've got a Google Pixel, which I didn't pay for as well because they refunded me because it should have been eSIM compatible and the, the Amazon people sold me, um, the company in the US sold me a Verizon lock phone. Still locked. I mean, I can use it on Wi-Fi wi wi and everything. It's still a decent Google Pixel phone, but I can't put, it's not eSIM compatible apparently because Verizon models, they remove that capability to just like, essentially lock people to their, their SIM network. So then I've got my Redmi A1, which is a crap phone I bought in Oman, uh, and I run the GPS off that usually because it's got a really good system where, I don't know, just the click mode, like the screen's really big, um, it doesn't use a lot of battery, and I uh, can just click it off and on. The Pixel is a fucking nightmare for the map. It just can't even last a day on Google Maps because you can't, if you can't like turn the phone off, you can just put it in fucking standby unless there's something in the settings that I'm missing. and not having the screen off just means it's just draining battery constantly um, and then you have to like oh it's just a nightmare I hate the Google Pixel so yeah so I've used basically all the battery on the Pixel all the battery on the um, the Redmi and then I've got my phone on, on now which is on I can't check but it's on like 68% battery uh, I should be able to get it up to 100 um, off of the that solar um power bank by tonight uh don't know what the samsung will be on haven't really tested it this is the first time so we'll see how the battery lasts there and then i've got an old blackberry phone which is kind of just i don't i think it has internet actually i haven't actually used it at all i got that one for free as well so i haven't i just got it because i had some credit left on that account i just thought i'd buy something before it, um yeah before uh before i went away so yeah that's the scenario with the phones um yeah, uh, I don't know if I explained like originally a while ago, I shifted some things. So unfortunately, the panny, the other side, the zip's broken, which is really annoying. I need to do something with that in a minute because it keeps rocking around. Um, I've also got the tent in here, as I said. Uh, there's the hat. All the white marks are very common. That's like sweat. <laughs> um, gonna have to inflate the tire in a minute soon. On the front, I've got a laptop and two broken tablets, which I've been carrying around for years. The tablets I still haven't managed to fix yet. Just haven't had time, or the countries never have Microsoft parts that I've been in. Sleeping bags on the front. Um, that thing on the top, the uh, handlebag. It's a bit annoying, actually. It's not really designed properly. 
Uh, yeah. Uh, I can't remember what else was I going to say. Yeah, Belgium. God, France is so good. This part of France compared to Belgium. Oh my god, like it's crazy nice. Like the roads are in really good condition. Belgium has the worst roads I've ever seen in my life. It's a shithole, absolute shithole country. Um, I never like Belgium. I oh, can't stand it. The fact that the EU is there as well just makes it so much worse. So much hypocrite. So much hypocrisy in that country. It's like the most hypocritical country on the planet. One of the biggest tax havens, probably the biggest um, direct cause of known mass genocide if we believe the standards historical narrative. Most corrupt country on the, on the planet, hence why it has the EU base there. Borders Luxembourg as well, which is a fake country. Probably actually really part of Belgium. Um, Belgium is a very powerful country. People don't realise it's one of the most influential countries in the world. Um, there's so much going on in Belgium. People, at least, you know, that derives from Belgium. Including uh, a lot of the um, the uh, the Jewish banks, um, not as far as we're aware, the Rothschilds, which is a big typical name, but a lot of uh, more kind of deeper undercover kind of banks uh, are all based in Belgium of Jewish origin. Hence Antwerp and the diamond smuggling trade, blood diamonds, of course, all get funneled through Antwerp. Um, yeah, just shit country. You know, a country shit when it has everything and has all the money. Uh, and yet none of it gets put back into the infrastructure. It's about as corrupt as you can get. And if anyone's been to Gardenau in Brussels, you'll see literally just thousands of um, migrants like sleeping in the train station next to the EU building. What else? What else is there to do? Yeah, France, people are very friendly up here. Boring though, sadly. I mean, everything is in perfect condition. It's kind of a sad little world. You you realise like where the, the middle vo middle class voter base comes from when you go through these little towns and you see like how people dedicate their entire lives probably to working working in the same job they got a very steady income local factory or local shop and they never really leave their region it's got those vibes to it every house is perfectly painted you know the, the drives are perfectly done it's like american style suburbia because people don't have anything else to direct their attention to, nothing of value or real worth. So it just all goes into the aesthetic, building their prison and building their deathbed, essentially. Um, so it's pretty, like, boring, to be honest. Like, you just, it's, whether it's Belgium or France, and I'm expecting the same with Germany, because this is, I'm on the German border now, so it's basically the same. All the names of the places are, are German. I'm in Dom Fessel now, so um, there we go. So yeah, it's kind of dull. Like, these people don't do anything. It's and and no one works. No shops are open. It, like, it's ridiculous. People just. I'm up early-ish, and I don't see anything open. Sometimes Lidl isn't even open when it's a national holiday. Or these supermarkets, which is randomly closed. Like I've been to high streets completely dead. Not a single person around in bigger towns. It's a pretty scary. Like what's happening? Where is everyone going? Obviously, we know death of the high streets a real thing. That's all intentional. It's just a derivative of. Um, tech, but also you know, a kind of intentional demise of society. But that's for another video. Um, but yeah, like, where are all these people? And then sometimes I go through towns, little kind of a iconic, um, you know, German or French kind of towns in Belgium. And there was one yesterday, beautiful town. It was a uh, uh, Kreuzberg actually, which is on the French side, but right on the right on the border. And there was a school like outing, so they had all the, the children out, and there was one blonde kid that stood out. So we're literally in the heart of a Caucasian European place. There was one blonde kid, and there was about 50 or 60 children, none of whom were Caucasian. Um, in, out of all of them, there were probably like three or four Caucasians, but like the blonde kid stood out, and I was like, wow, there's a blonde kid. And then I was like, oh shit, wait, I'm, I'm in Europe. Why is that a surprise? It's pretty crazy stuff, like, to be honest. Pretty crazy to see that. Um, and it's really strange, like, you'll go through these tiny little towns in France. France more than Belgium, I think. Um, at least in the borderlands. And you'll just hear Arabic music everywhere, and you'll go into the supermarket, and everyone has a hijab on. There's, yeah, everyone's Tunisian or Algerian. Um, like, no, no Caucasian people. Um, insane really crazy crazy scenario um but yeah that's the that's the the i guess the things i've noted thus far um yeah france is so so good for camping really so good for camping unbelievably good uh, so yeah looking looking to stay here probably until the day after tomorrow and then i'm gonna 
assuming I get to where I want to be tonight, I'll be in Karlsruhe tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, there's that vid.